I think most people have responded. We have quite a few saying I'm not done, like not done at all. Um, could every, anyone like put in the chat like what part they're at or like what they might be stuck on? Like, is it just like the fact of getting started or are you like confused about something? Just remind everyone that communicating and asking questions is one of the keys during distance learning. Mr. Rivera, do you have any uh, motivating advice for all of these, or motivator, <laughs> for all these kids that are, are clicking B? Um, I would say this is not our first presentation. You can definitely, definitely do this. I've heard almost everybody speak, maybe, I want to say, um, in small group in one way or another. So I know that you're capable of doing it out there. And the good thing is you're talking about yourself, you know, so this is something that um, isn't going to be on a test or anything. You already know this. Uh, so just give it a shot. And we can do this. It's gonna be fun. If anything, you'll like connect more with your classmates and you'll be like, hey, I'm into this too. Maybe have you seen this or have you ever listened to this band? Or you know what I mean? I think it's just like a connector and um, embrace it. Don't be afraid. Yeah, I feel like it's much less formal. Like we say presentation, but it's really a conversation. So I hope that eases some of your nerves. Um, okay, so let us know. I haven't seen anyone respond in the chat like where they are or if they like need to ask questions about something. So let me know what's going on. Um, um, and everyone, I am going to go to Seesaw now and uh, check and approve some posts. Right now, since last week, I have identity boxes from Andy, Jose, Angelino, Karen, Chanel. So Andy, Brittany, Let's see, Melanie Cruz talk. So I'm gonna just go approve and miss remind them about the facing history notebook. It looks like that you know that's where you're going. Yes. Uh, in the chat, you'll see that link to your period seven notebook. And remember, make sure you're posting to seesaw as usual, as well as this last slide. So if you go to your name, um, you'll like you have the synchronous asynchronous work and then that third slide is where you're posting a picture of your finished box or like what you have so far. I'm not seeing many posts in here. I think everyone forgot about the notebook. <laughs> so make sure you, you're posting in two places. So go to the link and do that now. Uh, shout out to Gilberto who posted her his, his, his identity box and I believe that Jonathan just posted his identity box. Yes, shout out to Jonathan. Woo! Thanks, Jonathan. Um, oh, and if you're lost, like completely lost on what the identity box is, quick recap, you can go to slide five and click these nice helpful links that Miss put in. And this is just facing yourself, like your own history. You're telling us your story. So I think that's like a really great part of this art class is that it's not like all just like like a math or history class where you're like repeating information we give you, you're like creating on your own and telling us about yourself. And like Miss said something that like I thought was funny, but it's really true. Like no one really asks you about yourself later on. So like knowing yourself is such a big part of life, but we really don't take the time to do it. So I hope you all do take the opportunity to do this. Um, so yeah, so we broke up our identities into four parts, our internal identity. Um, it was spiritual, intellectual, physical, and emotional. And then if you click on this, it talks about those circle maps that we did together. And then we planned out our box in our journal with this, um, with the thumbnails that we drew. And then that's how you got started on the project, connecting it back to like objects, photos, or symbols, or any items that you wanna put in your box. Or if you're making like a display, it doesn't have to be a box. You have a lot of options. And again, there are no wrong answers. The only wrong answer is choosing to not do it. I, 
I just I thought of something missed when you said that is it kind of, it's kind of like by doing this project we become more empathetic people so we're more likely to I'm letting Miguel in right now we're more likely to ask people like Mr. Rivera tell me a story about your life or you know like what's something you've been through Mr. Rivera like we're more likely to be able to connect with each other on this deep authentic level you know, if we, if we open up about ourselves, that makes us more open to others and to knowing the truth in others. And this teaches us like strong human behavior, how to love each other and see each other's true beauty. And all of this is getting at like choosing how to be better people, right? Which is part of our facing history, facing ourselves unit. We don't want to make the mistakes of the past that so many horrible, horrible things have happened. We want to be better. Right, so we're choosing to be good, we're choosing to be better. So I can't wait to hear everyone's presentations because I wanna know about you, I'm empathetic. Same, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so getting started on what we're doing today, we will be presenting or continuing the presentations with identity boxes, but before we do that, you are going to have a little story time about um, this story, it's really old. It's called The Allegory of the Cave. And it has a lot of great symbols and metaphors in it. So we'll be discussing what all that means and how it connects to us and what we're doing right now. So let me go back to Nearpod. Oh, thank you, Miss. And these are like your guiding questions. Why does, so the story is um, what Plato had written. And he says, life is like a cave and all of us are prisoners. If your chains broke, would you have the courage to leave the cave? And I'll, like what I'm saying might not make sense because we haven't watched the video yet, but like these are just have these in the back of your mind. And why does the sunlight burn the escaped prisoner's eyes? Why do the prisoners kill the escaped prisoner? And this is like an old story, right? Like this goes way back, like 3,000. And so you gotta think like, why has this story lasted so long? Why are we still reading this story years later? And we're not, we're so nice, you're not gonna read it right now. We're gonna watch a video about it. So just right, right on your pod as Miss is playing it. And just keep thinking, why is life like a cave? Not a box of chocolates. Why is life like a cave? And why are all of us, why are we all locked up? There's no wrong answer, guys. Okay, get those points. I'm letting Alberto in. You're on, Miss. Okay. What is reality? Knowledge. The meaning of life. Big topics you might tackle figuratively, explaining existence as a journey down a road or across an ocean, a climb, a war, a book, a thread, a game, a window of opportunity, or an all too short lived flicker of flame. 2,400 years ago, one of history's most famous thinkers said life is like being chained up in a cave forced to watch shadows flitting across a stone wall. Pretty cheery, right? That's actually what Plato suggested in his Allegory of the Cave, found in Book 7 of The Republic, in which the Greek philosopher envisioned the ideal society by examining concepts like justice, truth, and beauty. In the allegory, a group of prisoners have been confined in a cavern since birth with no knowledge of the outside world. They are chained facing a wall, unable to whoa, turn- Whoa, 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 whoa. Miss, they've been there since they were born? Yeah, they've been chained in a cave just staring at a wall. Why, why are they staring at the wall? Because that's, that's kind of like their entertainment. Like they see these shadows that like go across the cave wall and that's all they know. So they think that the world is this wall? Yeah. <laughs> and they, they're cool with being chained up. I don't know. I, I think we find out later if they are cool or not. Do they even know that there's an outside world? Don't. They don't. It's like a baby in a womb, guys. They don't know. That's all there is to the world. Gives off a faint light occasionally people pass by the fire carrying figures of animals 
and other objects that cast shadows on the wall. The whoa, 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 whoa. So they go back. So they think that that dog is a real dog. They think that that's a lady. Yeah. Because they don't know that the people are behind them. They just think the shadows are the only things in the world. So there are people behind them giving them this show, and they think that this is reality. Yeah. They think that that's a dog. That's not a dog. Dogs are, so, dogs are 3D and they're slobbery, but they think, they think, gosh, that's sad. Are you guys in a cave? Think about that as we keep watching the video. Right on AirPod. It casts shadows on the wall. The prisoners name and classify these illusions, believing they're perceiving actual entities. Suddenly, one prisoner is freed and brought outside for the first time. The sunlight hurts his eyes, and he finds the new environment disorienting. So wait, 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 wait. has he ever been outside, miss? Never. He's never seen the sunlight. That's got to hurt. Yeah. It's like when we wake up in the mornings and we open like our blinds and the sunlight hits us or we like turn on our light switch and we're always like, oh. It's See, like, that, that it was so that was that why my daughter was so mad when she was born? She was like this. She was like, why'd you take me out? She was mad, guys. And they, then they put like eye drops in and all of a sudden she learned, like slowly you learn to see and your eyes adjust to the light. Okay, I'm getting, okay, keep writing on Nearpod, points for Brittany. When told that the things around him are real, while the shadows were mere reflections. Like, he's so confused. He found out that objects, like trees, are real. He's like, the shadows are the lies, and these things, the things that cast the shadows, are actually what the world consists of. Like, he looks so confused. He cannot believe it. The shadows appeared much clearer to him, but gradually his eyes adjust until he can look at reflections in the water, at objects directly, and finally at the sun, whose light is the ultimate source of everything he has seen. The prisoner returns to the cave to share his discovery, but he is no longer used to the darkness and has a hard time seeing the shadows on the wall. The other prisoners think the journey has made him stupid and blind and violently resist any attempts to free them. Plato introduces this passage as an analogy of what it's wait, like. Wait, 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 go back. So what do they do, what, like in the actual story, because I think this is the PG version, and we're a little older. We're 15, 16 in here. I, I think <laughs> Andy Alcazar is older. In the real story, what happens? Like the actual story that Plato writes. Here they just have him karate chopping him, but what do they really do to the guy? They put him to death. They kill him! Cause he comes down and he says, guys, there's this infinite world of knowledge outside. There are these things called birds. They're 3D and they go tweet, tweet, tweet. That's not a bird. And outside they have these green things called trees. And that, like, that's a, we've been, we've been watching lies our whole life. All of this is a lie. Yes, the fire is warm, but come out with me. Escape your chain. You're all prisoners. Would you guys think I was crazy? Do I sound crazy to you? Would you, would you kill me? What, what would you guys do? No, Brittany would believe me. Brittany, you're so nice to me. But like everyone else, like, like, would you, like, what would you do if someone came out to you and be like, outside there are these green slimy things called frogs and you've been in a cave your whole life. Brittany, remember, you've been in the cave your whole life. This is all you know. And you're cozy by the fire. Would you, would you believe me or would you karate chop me? Karen, you wouldn't believe me? Karen, what's wrong? Do you know me? You wouldn't believe me, Karen? I would love for someone to unmute themselves just about now. Poor Miss Granados is like, are there even students there? <laughs> she's like, like, she's like, what is this? <laughs> Can we unmute? Would you believe me? Why or why not? Unmute. Okay, I'll talk. So basically, if I was in the cave, I would um, believe you because... Like, if you tell me, I'd be like, oh, my God, I want to go see, you know? Like, I want to see what, like, the hype is about. So I want to go follow and everything. But, like, that's, like, basically, like, saying 
if like I'm scared of the roller coaster and my friend's like, come on, let's go, let's go. It's really fun. Like, I'm going to want to follow after you, you know, like it's a human instinct. Okay, Brittany, but are all people as cool as you? Well, see, I can only speak for myself. I don't know about everyone else. So anyone else, like, what would you do? Give, give Brittany some twinkles, twinkles in the chat. But w what would you do? What would you do? Would you karate chop this fool or would you follow him? Wilson, why would you karate chop him? See, people don't want to say what they would do because they don't want to be cold called. What would you do? Unmute yourself. Guys, come on. Don't you want academic credit? Hmm. Would you leave the cave, yes or no? Just write yes or no in the chat. Let's start there. We won't cold call you, we promise. No. Thank you, Randy. It would be great if you explain why or why not, like you can write it. Probably not at first. Mr. Rivera, what do you think you would do? I don't know why I accidentally just sent it to you only. Um, yeah, I think I would wanna leave. I think um, maybe that's just my personality or I, I think I would get bored by just being in one place, especially it, even though there's comfort there, you know, I think there's also like some pain too, cause you're, you're literally like shackled. Uh, and I've never been in handcuffs, but, uh, they, they hurt, <laughs> you know, so I know that it would be painful. So it, it'd be like the choice between um, this pain here or a, a pain somewhere else, you know. And if that's the choice that I would have, I would, I'd rather take my chances somewhere else, you know. That's just me. All right. I think it's you guys, Randy, Brittany, maybe Wilson's there. I think that's who's here. Anyone else? Randy, Miss, you want to narrate Randy? Yeah, Randy was saying no, because we might think he's crazy and the cave is home. Like, I would be comfortable in the cave. Like, yeah, I don't know if I would leave if someone was like, he like came in flailing his arms. He's like, guys, I can't see what you see anymore. And like, they only see the shadows. He's saying he can't see the shadows anymore very clearly. So now they're like, oh, obviously, like, he went a little crazy out there. I don't want that to be me. We can't come back here if that me, that is me. Andy, can you explain your answer? I'll be more familiar what's inside than what's outside. It's this comfort zone that whatever that's new, you might fear it. Is that why Andy, like no one ever wants to read books and they just want to stare at their phones instead? Or is that too big of a jump? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like society has progressed to not fear that much of the unknown. Yeah, but if we're like entitled not knowing explicitly like what's going out in the real world, we wouldn't want to face the truth. Yeah. It's, too new. it's not something we're familiar with. So what do you mean like we wouldn't want to, like why don't people like the truth, Andy? I don't get it. Because it's out of something they, they realize. Like why does it, why do people say the truth hurts? Because mm. the truth is a, mis a mystical thing that people don't really know about. And I guess they want to keep what they know. Joshua says he knows that the truth hurts. Maybe he'll elaborate. Oh, I was going to say that uh, I think, yeah, the truth does hurt because, um, like, it okay so basically what i was like going where i was going with this is that um when when you tell someone the truth it could like you know affect who they are as a person maybe they want to uh you know keep their thoughts and they don't want to accept like the actual reality like the reality of the situation 
and they just want to like keep in a way keep living a lie basically yeah ignorance is bliss i used to always see that on, on posters when i was little i was like what does that mean you know but like ignorance like being in the cave ignoring the truth ignoring that there's a light outside it's nice it's comforting like we don't want to be challenged we want to play candy crush we don't want to read a book are you kidding me don't make me think don't make me talk about my identity box i'm not gonna do that right like we want to just like stay like where it's easy don't make me learn how to walk mom oh wait the chat's on fire or is that all you oh miss granados my mom loves candy crush <laughs> Mine too. They're obsessed. i just see commercials about it um wilson said the truth may go against what people believe andy said there isn't always bad truth mm. well and truth isn't bad right Sorry, go on, miss. Oh, sorry, no. I'm like rolling through all the <laughs> chats. Um, Brittany oh, no. said, if you keep the truth in your in, you hurt yourself. While it's better to tell them and let them choose how they take it. What do you mean by that, Brittany? Okay, so basically I was talking about how, you know how Andy was talking about like, um, people don't like to state the truth. So if like they were to, if he was to keep it inside and everything and like not tell anybody, like you feel guilty and it's like living with guilt. So like, it's basically like hurting you, like knowing that you know the truth. And like, if they ever find out, like they're gonna feel some type of way that you didn't tell them, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think what's happening in everyone's head is they're applying this story to their life. And we don't know if that's happening in your head, though, unless you write in Nearpod. But the whole point of this is we're connecting this to your identity box and we're also connecting it to what you're learning in history. This is human nature. Human beings don't like their ignorance to be questioned. They like things comfortable. They like to stay the same. It hurts to learn. So please like right on Nearpod, Miss, I'm just, I think we don't even need to watch the rest of the video. I think we covered it like with our storytelling, but maybe show the picture and recap one more time. Points for Mr. Rivera for answering in Nearpod. Um, but why is life, why is life like a cave? Maybe just show the pictures and the deck um, just for the sake of time. Um, so, so like, why is life like a cave and maybe Explain our story time one more time, Miss, in your in your own voice, and then we'll we're gonna test to see if you're listening in a second on draw it. So write why life is like a cave on the collaboration board, and we're gonna zip to the next activity. So, Miss, give me give me a summary because I I got yeah like hardly any participation on your pod. Yeah. So if the video like it goes by kind of fast, so little summary is okay. So all these prisoners are stuck here in this cave. They're just like chained up. They can't move. They can't see past this wall. Like they don't know what these shadows are coming from. So they're born, raised. That's all they know. They like see this wall 24 seven. And these are all metaphors. Like obviously like they wouldn't survive, right? If, if they were like raised like that. So this is all they see, all they know. And then one day, one of the prisoners gets free. His chains break off and he climbs over this wall. He like clambers up over through here. And then he like tries to escape through here. But like imagine being like at this point, you're like seeing the light, you're being really blinded, your eyes probably hurt, and you're like, you've like been through all of this. So he's trying to climb up and he finally decides like he's going to get out. So he's outside and he's realizing like there's a whole world outside of this little cave. So he's outside, he sees the sun, he sees the trees, he sees everything around him. And he decides it's his job to go back and free the other prisoners. So he goes back in after he's already experienced the world. And then he tries to free these people. But they decide he's crazy. They don't want to go. They're comfortable in the cave, right? Like, that's all they know. They, they're kind of afraid. So people, when they're afraid, they'll react. And they got violent and they killed him because he wouldn't leave them alone. So... That's kind of how the story ends and the moral is that people need to be taught 
I don't know if I should tell them the moral. <laughs> in the video, they're saying like the moral is that um, Socrates was killed because of his ideas. So Plato's kind of like telling his story that like people with big ideas get killed because others don't agree. And that he says like the majority is ignorant and that they need to learn. Yeah, and like all of this applies to what happens again and again in human society right so like if someone's being an upstander and questioning what's happening bullies are going to jump on the upstander and like silence him so like you guys are talking about this all the time with your identity box you're like we're scared of being judged you but you guys have been kind of saying that all year we stay quiet because we're afraid that people we don't post a seesaw because we're afraid of what people will say right so we've experienced this in middle school where or we get made fun of if we're different or if we question things or if we or if we like do something different like wasn't it in here that someone was talking about anime or the other class like i like anime like if we're a little different right we're we're afraid that we're going to get put down socrates was murdered during world war ii right i'm jumping here but what you're learning about in mr bryant's class is that during World War II, if anyone spoke up against Hitler and what he was doing, they were murdered, right? So during World War II, like, um, Miss, can you circle all those puppeteers? Mm -hmm. So guys, Nearpod's open. Please kind of like try to label all of this with the word bank. But like the Nazis, like no one wanted to question what the Nazis were saying. The Nazis were saying all these lies, like, okay, the Jews are the reason why all these bad things are happening in the world they should be sent away right so they're pushing this like racist propaganda and everyone no one wants to speak up and say that hitler's messed up because they don't want to die right everyone wants to stay comfortable so because everyone stays silent and there aren't many upstanders we have horrible things happen during world war ii so this is human nature like people don't speak up but you got to learn to like develop your strength to like question to society to see your inner beauty and to be unique be be different right so and that's what knowledge is knowledge is the process of leaving the cave so i, I hope i'm not saying too many answers but once you guys face the truth and once you talk about like everything that you've been going through you'll have more strength and that's like kind of what we want to share in your identity box is we want you to share your stories we want you to share like the essence of who you are, we want you to explore that. So we're talking about a lot. Maybe Miss, you could go over some, and please private message us if you have a question, but go over some of the ideas that are coming up on uh, in on Nearpod. Um, yeah, we got freedom is outside of the caves. Um, view the truth. Uh, Sorry, yellow is hard to read on this. Obtaining the knowledge of what is outside the cave. Awesome. Nice, Wilson. Keep going. Um, Karen, uh, still working. And Miss, do I need to you maybe read the words in the word bank? Mr. Rivera pointed out that the words are hard to see on Nearpod. Um, oh, yeah. maybe and we I, we don't have to use the words in the word bank, right? We could put our own words if we are like, oh, the shadows are lies. I don't know if that's, oh yeah, that's there. But fake, like yeah. I could use the word fake, right? Mm -hmm. I saw some people doing that. Like Wilson wrote like sentences in here, like referring to outside of the cave. So yeah, you don't have to use the word bank, but if you can't see it, you could also go to slide nine on the deck. And yeah. Miss, can you slowly read each word um, just for like all of our kids? Yeah, like slowly read each word. Mm -hmm. There's truth, ignorance, corruption or lies, upstander, bully, bystander, happiness, oppressor or oppressors, um, question, society, rebel, dictator and propaganda and if you're not sure about these words oppression is when you're being held down by those in power we're made to feel inferior someone in the other class pointed out like we can oppress ourselves right i forgot who that was um but they were talking about like having that 
thought that everyone's always going to be judging you is kind of like oppressing yourself, isn't it? Like when you won't let you like be yourself, you're like telling your brain like, oh, you can't be you because you're going to be judged for like the fear of how other people will see you. Yeah, I thought that was interesting when they said that ignorant and we want to point out that ignorance isn't to like be dumb. It's just it has the word ignore in it. So people who are ignorant aren't necessarily uneducated. They just might not know or might be blind to something. So those who oppress us blind us. It's like we can't see when you're trapped in a cave. Um, so people are like in this photo, they have like someone covering this guy's eyes and his mouth. So like he's ignorant because he can't see or just doesn't know. And then dictators are people who like need to be in control, someone who controls our hearts and minds. They can oppress us and mess up how we see beauty, ourselves, and the world. So they're depicted as like the puppet masters in this picture. And going back to Nearpod, we have more people answering. I think we left off on Chanel. She wrote, truth and happiness as outside of the cave. Ignorance is choosing to stay in the cave. Um, Brittany said, shadows are corruption and lies. Leaving the cave, upstander. Um, men creating the shadows is oppression. Um, the prisoners were bystanders, and choosing to stay in the cave was ignorance. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, Jose still working. Oh, yeah. I think Wilson's here. <laughs> and and just a reminder, like classwork. Oh yeah, I wanted to read that. That was interesting. Wilson's. Okay. Uh, sun, he read, the sun is the ultimate source of light that made objects cast shadows. The only reality was known to these prisoners. Um, shadows were illusions and lies made by the puppet masters, basically telling the prisoners that this is reality. Thanks, Wilson. Sorry, miss, you're saying something about... I, uh, yeah, I was just, yeah. We, we, constant problem this year, guys, is you, you're not engaging. Um, some some of you are engaging, and thank you. But I, I when we get to the end of the semester, which is soon, I start to get nervous because <laughs> I I got to figure out if I can pass you guys. So please, like, let us show us you're there and show us you care by engaging. This is a chance to get some points. And Miss, maybe talk briefly about how this lesson will continue during academic prep. That assignment on the on the deck uh your fire right this week fire right 14 which is part of your grade academic prep is part of your grade is to write about the cave and draw it yeah um so for the instructions here are using watercolor colored pencil or pen to create your own person personal illustration of a moment in the cave so you can go back and watch that video again if you like need a retelling of the story but here's an example of this moment when the prisoner's leaving so you can see like in the background he's escaping into this white light he's like holding his hands over his eyes because he is blinded and he's leaving behind that fire and like these puppet masters with their fake objects and you can label each symbol like you can put it off to the side on like a sticky note too or like explain what each symbol personally means to you and don't forget to post it in here. Yeah, and just, I was gonna say earlier, the Facing History Notebook, guys, we're slowly building your slides for your sophomore promise and your final. So like, we're kind of like helping you to figure out where, how all of your ideas are connected and related. So the sophomore promise is gonna be much easier if you're doing like all the classwork and the assignments as we go. So it's like, I could see Mr. Rivera, when we're talking about what your promise is, he may say to you, well, why do you want to leave the cave? Or like, are you in the cave? And he might refer to you about it, and you might not know what he's talking about because you didn't do this lesson. So it's kind of like all of them kind of like, all of the ideas that we're talking about during this unit kind of connect. 
So that's why we want you to put all the facing history stuff in one spot. So it's easier at the end. And you're going to do an essay for Mr. Garcia and Mr. Bryant, like a, an essay that counts for both classes. And it'll help if you have all of these ideas from this class in one space. So trust me, trust the process, guys. Hmm. All right. Have a few more. Mm -hmm. Angelino, I know you started, but where is it? Mm -hmm. Brittany, yeah. mm -hmm. I think I read this. Jose. Mm -hmm. Guys, don't be afraid of being wrong. Don't, don't stay in the cave. Can we write in the chat, are you in the cave? Yes or no? Everyone in the waiting room. Oh, there's Dustin. Are you in the cave? Yes or no? Can you please write in the chat? Like, I'm in the cave, I'm not in the cave. Got a response from Brittany. <laughs> Thanks, Brittany. I promise not to call on you and explain. <laughs> like, Miguel Montiel, are you in the cave? Destiny, are you in the cave? You just came in, but are you in a cave? A figurative one? Alberto, are you in the cave? Andy Franco, are you there? Are you in the cave? You can just say yes or no on mute for some points. Catherine Hernandez, are you in the cave? Gabriel, Gabriel, Andy Frank, are you in the cave? I'm in the cave. I'm 38 or 37. I can't figure out which one, but I'm definitely in the cave. I still am. All right. Someone last class was saying that they're in and out of the cave and that you could run back inside when it's too much. I thought it was like a funny, she like related it to a roly poly, which is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. The outer shell to like close back up. <laughs> okay, Destiny, welcome to class, Destiny. Okay, so make sure you keep doing this work during academic prep, and I think we got to chug forward and transition to our second chunk of class in a second. Um, anyone else want to unmute and talk about the, their cave experience? You're always in the cave, but you your sophomore promise could be to leave the cave, but in that, that you're done. Like you could promise to leave the cave, but you gotta know what it means, right? So show us that you know what it means. Andy said the house is the cave during quarantine. You wanna explain that, Andy? Give us some energy in here. Please. I don't know, I, I might not be talking to anyone. <laughs> I mean, this past time we've just been in the house for a long time, not us going outside. But we do have other um, things that could get us out of this cave, like social media, which is kind of showing what is actually happening outside. Well, there, this is something interesting, though, Andy. Is social media is that is that the shadows? Like we see social media and we think it's reality, but is social media truth? Well, it comes to news. Yeah, you might. Well, didn't you hear about the vaccine? It's getting passed down, and I couldn't. I didn't figure that out till social media showed it. Oh, that like we can get the vaccine. Yeah, it's like it's posting out like current, like days of what's gonna happen. So there could be some truth into it, but social media is not always reliable. Also, like news isn't always reliable either. Like I feel like they make it so dramatic to catch everyone's attention that like it's not always like the full truth. They like try and go too extreme one way or the other. It's like you can't trust anything. <laughs> so moral of the story, we all need to get vaccined. But I can't talk. Vaccinated. 
so we can leave and we can like see real find real truth because guys it's up to you guys to like learn how to figure out what truth is that's what education is about right we're teaching you critical thinking skills so you can get out but you're not going to get strong unless you write on your pod i mean unless you do your identity box so let's go let's go let's go it is terrible for accuracy oh yeah the news i know they just want ratings but then some a lot of news is true it's just you got to figure out what truth is for you so we're what well, what we're like you may be like why are we learning about this in art class guys this is going to keep you from keeping history from repeating itself this is everything this lesson it's a huge lesson and the best art is truth the best art is out of the cave okay we're moving uh we're moving into the identity box okay Wow, we have quite a bit of time. I think we can do a few presentations in this class. So do we have any brave volunteers to share what they have so far or a finished version of their identity box presentation? That, may I add, was due last week. I just want to point that out to everyone. <laughs> like we're flexible with deadlines, but it can get to be a little ridiculous. So. Can we share, like, I don't wanna make you feel bad, but like, I would like anyone to share and show, miss, maybe show the pictures of all the kids in person oh, yeah. um, sharing their identity box. But this is like a big deal. This is a big AJR moment. And you would be sharing your identity box to give all of us strength to leave the cave. So just talk about it out loud. Yeah, and if you're like in a position where you're one of the few, I know this class had a few people who haven't like started yet. So if you have started or if you've finished, it'd be great for you to share like your process and what you've put in for those of us who might be a little stuck or unsure of what we're doing. Yeah, Gilberto, I know you need some points, Mr. Cabrera. Brave senior. So right now I have a box from Jonathan, Chanel, Karen, Angel, Jose, Gilberto, and Andy. And I have to look back and grade the ones on Seesaw, but I'm gonna go to Seesaw right now and make sure that I have everyone cover. Anthony, you're gonna share? Present your identity box, Mr. Sante? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, Andy Alcazar's identity box just came in. And then make the circle map. He lost his voice. And Mr. Rivera, can they do a 2D identity box? What, what would you recommend to them if they're like behind? Should they do the slide? Um, yes, definitely. Like, uh, there's not, it's not too late to finish, you know what I mean? And these slides, is a really easy way to um, do it, especially if you have like a lot of pictures that you want to use. Say that you have like a, a picture of your grandfather or something who's no longer with you. You know, you can just take a photo of it, put it in the slide, boom. You know, um, really easy. And you can just take photos around your, your house or your room of whatever you want to include in your identity. Uh, not box, but presentation. Mm -hmm. Identity thing. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so do it. You know, there's there's not um, it's not too late. And if for this chunk of class, if someone wants to be in a breakout room with Mr. Rivera during different presentations, then that's fine. Now, let's see. Don't run and go to Mr. Rivera and think that means that you won't have to talk. I'm just teasing you, Let's see. But like anyone who wants to work with um, Mr. Rivera, please like private message him or me, and we'll put you in a breakout room. And that's and a great example of, yeah, Miss, you were going to explain that. Oh, yeah, Did just have another a question. Yeah. Other than, like, the digital format is not using a box. So like they've like kind of displayed it, laid it out, and you can still see everything like in here. They printed out some photos. They have like a one piece poster and boxing I know is really important to him. I think these are some moves. Like imperfect self-love. Uh, yeah, I think that's a really beautiful kind of installation version of the identity box. 
right? And there's no wrong answer. The only wrong answer is not doing it. It's very interesting how he also had things that he loved on the screen behind him. So very innovative. And it's feeling like I see that texture on those headphones and I, I think he's been through a lot, you know? Like you, you like start to really see someone when they take off their mask, you know? And, and it's like, there's a story behind that necklace, right? So please post, Miss, can you um, share Fatima's presentation to inspire this class? Um, as we're waiting for some bravery. Um, guys, please um, let me know in the chat if you're still there. <laughs> I'm getting a little sad right now. Uh, but like, let us know if you're there and uh, how we can help you. Here is a student from your class that presented their identity box. And maybe start your circle map right now and um, share what you're learning about her just so that's done. So make a circle map in your um, notebook. Um, and then write what you're learning about Fatima and try to get strength from her. Miss, you want to read that frame of reference? Yes, it asks, how does hearing your peers' stories give you strength? That's be interesting. The other way around, how does telling your story give you strength? Yes, and here's Fatima. She's like super shy and she's opened up slowly over the year. Uh, but she's been shy in Zoom, but she's opened up throughout the year. And she gave this presentation on Friday. And I'm wearing the same shirt. I was wearing the same shirt on Friday. Look at that. <laughs> Identity box presentation. Thank you, Fatima, for leaving. You share whatever you want to share. Everyone writing your circle map. Thank you, Fatima. Yeah. Um, so in my box, I just wrote my name and it says my identity box, but my identity box. Uh, I didn't really know how to start it, so I was stuck on what to add and all that. But physical things you will notice about me is I have brown eyes. I have now brown and black hair because I dyed my hair. I am Mexican, and you'll probably catch me laughing or smiling because I'm always like talkative. You'll catch me, you know, being outgoing, and you'll notice that I'm very approachable and that I'm short. <laughs> so <laughs> inside my box, I have a whole bunch of pictures. Um, of my animals, my grandparents, my family. Um, they have each impacted my life separately and in different ways. Um, so I decided to, you know, add as much as I could. It got a lot, a lot going on. <laughs> Inside my book, I was also kind of stuck um, because I, I was afraid to share too much um, because I have been through a lot like other people. So I'll first start with my grandparents. Um, you can see them, that's the biggest picture I got here. I lost them one year apart from each other. Um, it did hit me hard um, because I was very, very close to them, especially with my grandmother. Another thing people won't know about me or my family is that my mom had four miscarriages before having my older brother. And, you know, I wasn't alive yet, so I didn't really, you know, it didn't hit me hard, but she did get pregnant one last time after my little brother. And I was alive, obviously, um, and she, she was born dead. Uh, it did hit me hard, and um, randomly, I could be quiet and feel you know, pop in my head. The thing about this is you think you get over them, but they'll keep coming back into your life. Um, most of us will expect it to hit us around their birthdays. In my case, that's not what happened. Uh, it hits me randomly throughout the years. Uh, so yeah, I have a little view. You can't really see it because it's very small. His name was Uriel, so it's a little you. It's part of a necklace um, that I got to have him closer to me. Um, uh, other things people don't know is I was bullied badly throughout my whole life. Um, it hit me so much, especially during middle school. Um, but I found out to, I found out how to deal with it, and I became more aware and how to help other people. Um, for instance, my brothers were both getting picked on uh, at church, um, and I was always the one that was like, okay, you can mess with me, but not my family. When it came to family, I didn't care who it was. I would stand up for them because that's the type of person I am. I love helping people. I love making sure everybody feels safe and comfortable, um, and I hate when people try to be better than others because we should all be, you know, comfortable in a, in a, I don't know, in a comfortable space. Uh, so since, like I mentioned, I love making people happy. For my mom's birthday, it was in the beginning of April, I made her this little box. And inside is all these type of notes 
that tell her why I love her and you know th saying thank you to her. Um, she, when I saw her face, it was made up with joy, um, and that's when I knew it was worth it. I <laughs> I stayed awake until 3 a.m. doing this, but it doesn't matter how long you take on these things because it, it's all worth it in the end, technically. Um, for my brother's birthday, I made him this little thing with his pictures and all that, and it has an inside joke. Um, you can see right here it says, Vox La Sencia. Me and my older brother both have my mom's last name, but he doesn't. <laughs> so that's why I put his whole name, but with no last name, because he doesn't have my mom's last name. So just a little inside joke. And when he laughed at it, it was like so cute and such a special moment to it. I also made it for his graduation with the picture of him. And he was very happy because, you know, the COVID hit and he thought he wasn't going to get anything. And him just receiving this made him very happy. And I made it for my dad for um father's day um which he loves and same with my mom instead of a box i made it in a canvas and then one last thing i would share was for a few other things is in the box i put sometimes the simple things become the most important and valuable to us when my grandma passed away a few months before she taught me how to fold a bag like this to create more space and you know to have them you could throw it around and it won't like you know get out of place and now that my mom goes to the grocery and all that, I'm always the one that folds the bag. And it's just a little reminder to know I have a piece of her with me. Um, another thing is, one last thing that I'll share is that I love taking pictures. I love getting the little moments on a camera to give with us forever. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. All right, so can you please write in your circle map what you learned about Fatima or how she's giving you strength? And I made breakout rooms. I put some kids with Mr. Rivera. Um, so please check in with Mr. Rivera, let, you, let him know how you're doing. And then um, uh, Ms. Granados, so I put you in a breakout room with um, Chanel Sandoval, who already presented, so maybe she could let you know how her box is going. And Alberto, Andrea, and Arelli, so maybe they'll present. Ms. Hibbler, you'll be able to uh, hop around. And I'm just making sure the breakout rooms are pretty even, so I'll be hopping around. So, Miss, do you want to go over the presentation structure? Yeah, uh, just disclaimer that we love hearing you all open up, but we want you to know so you're not shocked. Um, if you do talk about self-harm, harming others or others who have harmed you in the past, even if it is in the past, it will have to be reported to school admin and the mental health team. Um, and yeah, just disclaimer, how many things do you present? You can do five or more. So you have three minutes to present your what you have or ideas that you have for feedback and then two minutes for questions or feedback from everyone else in your group. And it can be like conversation style like we talked about before. Like it doesn't have to be so formal. You're not like standing in front of the class and just listing things off. Um, yeah, so it could be like a conversation and yeah, make sure you ask them questions. Um, and I'll be hopping around from room to room. We can hear two presentations. Um, so I'll be in and out, uh, but please don't go on to the next person till I say switch. Okay, Siri, start the timer for five minutes. You don't have the timer app installed. Okay, never mind. I'll switch it in like five minutes, okay? Uh, but I'll tell you when to go. Okay, I'll tell you when to switch. So person one, you go first, jump up and share. On your mark, get set, go. I'm opening all rooms. Now starts the awkwardness. <laughs> Try to get him to talk. You said that Chanel has already gone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, she could, she was, she could share an update. She was kind of like finishing it up or anyone else in here could go. I'm going to keep popping. 
show us what you have so far. Um, did someone volunteer yet? No, Letsy said she's already gone last class. So we have Jose, Randy, or Dun, 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 dun. Brittany, Jose, Joshua, Kaylee, Wilson, Angel. Anyone going to present? You uh, turn your camera on, share your screen. So someone should have their camera on or share their screen. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay. Just give me a moment. You guys can see? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, we can see. All right, good. Um, so I guess I'll start with the thing that I had at the beginning. I think Legos were a very prized possession of mine. When I was younger, I really loved to play with them. And I found out like how much I loved Legos in the past. And like, um, it, As long as you have like something that you can save, then that's fine. Put a picture describing. Yeah, I think oh, this would be a cool idea. That's that's what I want because I feel like it's writing. It will be like too. Not not even boring for me. Just like too, like too expected. It's expected. Yeah, and if you were to do pictures or drawings, it would be more of like a visual experience. Drawings would be better. Be, yeah, there. drawings would be cool. And then Aureli wrote that they don't know what objects to put in your box. Aureli, how did you want to go about your identity box? Were you going to do like what Alberto was doing, like hobbies and stuff? To uh, Ms. Granados, all of the kids did like these circle maps like before spring break, like four weeks ago, where they were brainstorming about their emotional, intellectual, physical, Oh, I remember those spiritual and stuff like that. Yeah, that was a brainstorm for the identity box. Oh, got it. And so, like, so you can just walk around your space, you know, rather than be like, okay, well, this is important to me, and put it in your box, and then think about like, well, why is this such a key part of my internal identity? Hmm. I'm gonna keep hopping. What is, is someone talking? Um, no, I can't get anyone to talk. It, oh, okay. <laughs> I just pulled up Karen's project. Um, let's see, maybe you could present again to give Randy some ideas because um, he might be feeling stuck. Would that be okay, let's see? Also, do you have a photo of the inside of your box? Let's see, I only see. Yeah. Oh, it's been five minutes. Um, move on to the next person. Dun, 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 dun. Second person, so that means, um, what's up, miss? Hey, I'm just hopping. Yeah, what? Just having some motivation trouble here. Um, yeah, how's it going over there? Uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're chugging along. I got Andy Alcazar presenting. A lot of kids are like, I don't know what to put. So I feel like things got lost in translation or we didn't do the brainstorm before break. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with a lot of kids. Well, I'm going to keep hopping. Thank okay. you. Hmm, anyone in here presenting? 
Melanie, you talked. Did you share a box? Yeah, no box yet. How's it going, Melanie? How's your box going? Anthony or Saul, how are your boxes going, guys? Oh, that's great. You could also come to office hours to present. Okay, I will do that. Okay, I hope you're well. I hope you guys are well. Just go around your space and gather things and think about, well, why is this important to me? What, it, what does this mean to me? You don't have to have some profound thing to say about every object. Leave the cave, come out of your shell. <laughs> Hi, guys. You don't have to draw, too. Like, this, this project can be a break from drawing for those of us who are nervous. Ms. Granados, would you like this project in school? Yeah, I've done something similar to it where you have to use different symbols to represent who you are. Yeah, so you don't have to draw. You can just go like grab some stuff, be like, why is this pen so essential to me? Why is this spray bottle? Why do I keep grabbing it? It must mean something to me. You know, maybe, I don't know, bad joke. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Mr. Radio Silence? Yeah, I'm, I had like a, you know how when, when a kid is about to jump off the diving board and they're like ready to do it and then, oh, no. like, uh, and then they just pull back at the last minute. That's kind of like what I felt like we had. Can you see Nearpod? Uh, oh, what were you going to say? Yeah, I, I can see it. What were you going to say, mister? I can't remember. <laughs> I know, I know. My, yeah. All right, people are coming back. Hello, everyone. So, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot happening, right? I don't know what's happening, but, you know, I think that this pandemic is hard, number one. Um, and I think we're, like, feeling really tired of this kind of school. I think that's happening. Um, but you know this is we want to finish strong guys so um everyone write on nearpod how will you use this project to get out of the cave um what are your next steps and if you don't like let us know what your next steps are on nearpod we kind of assume that you kind of walked away and you're not there um but like, this is a really, like, right, Mr. Rivera? Like, this is like the project to do to really show effort. Like what, any, any, like you've been, you, you've seen this in person. What have you said to kids in the past in person? Um, I think it was just so much easier in the past because, you know, there's not that huge gap, the virtual gap that we're in. Um, but we, we mentioned it before and we'll do it again. Um, probably when we see you again this week uh, it's not too late to turn in anything um it, everything that you need for this project is is literally like at your house somewhere around your room on uh, the living room whatever um just give it a try you'll be surprised by what what you can find if you actually like take a look inside it i know that sounds cheesy but you know <laughs> it's it's true um, so I want to thank Ms. Hibbler and thank you, Ms. Granados, for coming in and observing. I want to thank everyone who's participating and everyone for being there and doing this distance learning thing. Um, we are going to start um, building ideas towards this project next class. Um, we're going to um, start to think about this concept of a mask. So we're slowly exiting out of the identity box, but that doesn't, like you can always learn about yourself and always add on. 
but I am going to put the identity boxes grades in the grade book by the end of the week. We will give similar to this, like a chunk of 15 minutes at the end of the next two classes. Wednesday and Friday, we'll give you a chance for presentations. We're available for office hours today, Wednesday, Thursday, if you want to come with some friends and present in small group there. So that's 2.30 to 3. If you haven't picked up your materials from so school for quarter four, your acrylic paint and your materials to build your mask, please do that. You got little jewels and you got a plastic flower. We will be building the base of this mask at the end of the week. So it's going to start to get really awkward if you don't have your supplies. And I'm going to start making YouTube videos about how to build this mask. So please make sure that you are on top of things and you do your identity box by the end of the week. You still do your self portrait. You could still draw things that are 3D, but we're getting really tight guys. If you have any late work, you have to come to office hours and I'll fix your grade up right away. Okay, but, but we're really in procrastination mode. So let's get this identity box done, guys. It's an easy A, it really is. Um, and yeah, just be honest. Thank you, everyone. Keep moving forward. Thank you, Chanel. Bye, Thank everybody. You, Mr. Rivera. Thank you so Take much. Bye, Miss. Bye, Miss. See you Bye, tomorrow. Miss. Bye, Miss. <laughs> <See> you tomorrow. <laughs> Miss Granados, are you gonna log? Okay, do we debrief? I've never done this program before. <laughs> um, it's up to you, honestly. I haven't received any information about like guidelines on how to do this. I have to complete observation hours for my classes, so I fill out like a separate like module about what I like saw and just like notes. But do you have any questions to like help with your thinking or? My module is mostly about assessments. So I think there was an assessment at the beginning of class, right, about um, how they felt about their presentations. Mm -hmm. was. Did we do that, Ms. Hibbler? <laughs> I don't even remember. I think that was like the check-in, like uh, how they're feeling, mm -hmm. or where they're at. Is that the? Yeah, that was on presentations, right? Yeah, and also, um, yeah, Ms. Hibbler, can you give, um, Ms. Granados, the mid-project critique link. Oh yeah. That uh, that uh, link that she's going to give you is uh, in a form of assessment that works better in person. Okay. But it's it's to get them to like kind of self-monitor about their project, and then I would say like one of the assessments was having them label the different parts of the cave. Mm -hmm. um, so that was an assessment. Um, yeah, like Nearpod is an app that's really good for kind of like like constant CFUs and building them that that into your lesson, okay. the Nearpod app. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the allegory of the cave is there to kind of encourage them to kind of like find truth mm -hmm. in their identity. But a lot of stuff gets lost in translation and a lot of kids, you know, can hide behind the virtual mask. So that's something that we're working with. Yeah. Um, thank you for sending me that link for the assessment. Yeah, do you see all the questions in the middle? Yes. So those are good for accountable talk. Like, so the, normally the way those would work is kids would be in groups of four and they would talk like about their box and they would ask each other questions to kind of like help the, see if they're aligned with the rubric and to give each other next steps. So I do that for each progress. Hasn't been working so well in Zoom. Yeah. Are you all going back to campus in the fall? <laughs> I, I mean, the ninth grade is going back now, and hopefully I'll be back. We'll see. My classes are really jammed packed because I'm the only art teacher on campus, and they all need to get a VAPA credit. So right. it's kind of like a space issue because I sort of teach in a shoebox, mm -hmm. and there's like 35 kids in a class. So oh. I, I kind of feel like I'm just going to do class outside. That'd be cool. Yeah. So yeah, just like let me know. Yeah. Keep okay. me posted. Let me know what I can do to help you. Thank you so much. I'll probably be joining for this was seventh period, right? On Wednesday. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Have You're a good welcome. Day. Have a good day. Bye. Um, I think it's interesting how kids did quotes for this. Yeah, that was, I like um Andy's quote. Mm -hmm.
Also, um, Randy, are you still here? We kind of got cut off, but I want to make sure you didn't have any questions about like how to start the box. I know it's like daunting starting projects. It's my least favorite part of like doing things is starting. I wonder if it's an intimidating forum to have a bunch of grown-ups with their cameras on and like, oh, reveal the essence of yourself. Would it be better if we just like talk like this? I don't know. This feels so... Yeah, no. <laughs> it feels so odd. I, I feel like that's like the reverse, but I don't even know. There's so many flaws with this system. It's ridiculous. Ugh. Okay, so I'm just fixing attendance, miss, and then we can debrief. Oh, I'm still recording. Ha ha. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Kirk. If you see this video, you've made it this far. More 